This is Mick Foley, and you are watching C Red TV here, right here on YouTube. Have a nice day. This is Cody Dana, and you are watching C Rad TV on YouTube. And just like Cody Diener, C Rad TV lives by two simple words just give her. Yeah. How's it going, guys? It's Rad C at a WWE SmackDown review from May 7th. Let's go ahead and let's jump right into it. So we start off SmackDown with AJ Styles, music hitting, and AJ Styles coming out to the ring. So AJ Styles is taking advantage of the new wild card rule as was announced on Raw. So AJ is going to be one of four competitors to come over to Raw tonight, at least. So AJ comes out, AJ comes in the ring. AJ says that now with the wild card rule, you can now crash a rival brand at any time. Yes, AJ, that is how the rule works. So then AJ goes on and says that SmackDown is still the house that AJ Styles built. And then Sami Zayn's music hits, and then Sami Zayn comes out to the rain. So then Sami says that he'd rather be anywhere on his day off, but surrounded by Kentucky Fried Hillbillies. Uh, because they're in Louisville, Kentucky. And the for and KFC stands for Kentucky Fried Chicken. I, under I see what he did there. So then Sammy goes on and says that AJ is a toxic ego that spirals out of control right onto the WWE Universe. What? So then AJ goes on and says that Sammy smells like dumpster trash in an old person's foot. Uh, so now we're going to make dumpster jokes and garbage jokes because Sammy was thrown into a dumpster last night by Braun Strowman. So then AJ goes on and tells Sammy to take a shower. And then the crowd starts chanting, take a shower. And then Sammy said he did take a shower, but it's hard to get the smell out. Bullshit, ain't that hard. Don't feed me that crap. So then the New Day's music hits, and then the New Day WWE champion Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods come out. Kofi goes on and says that he's hurt, that there's a party in the rain, and that the New Day weren't invited. Aw, oh, poor Kofi. Don't worry, you'll be invited to the party at Money in the Bank. In two weeks. Don't worry about that. So then Kofi goes on and says that AJ no longer lives on SmackDown anymore. Per the Superstar Shakeup. And then Kofi asks, what is AJ doing here? And AJ goes on and said that since Kofi invaded Raw due to the wildcard rule, AJ said that he's out here to return the favor. Then Xavier Woods goes on and then says a famous Ice Cube quote, which the quote is, you better check yourself before you break yourself. Ah, so now we're saying famous people's quotes now. So then Kofi once again asks what AJ is going to do. So then Sammy goes on and asks if Kofi is going to put the WWE title on the line against AJ Styles. Then Sammy goes on and says that he loves Kofi. Ha! <laughs> whoa, Sammy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy. Like, Sammy, I think Kofi's married. He has a couple kids. I don't think Kofi swings that way. But, Sammy, if you have strong feelings for Kofi, there's no need to announce them out in the open. This is a PG show. We can't have that shit here. We don't turn to 14A till October. Too soon for that. But, Sammy, if you really want to talk to, your, talk to Kofi about your feelings for him, either A, go backstage when the camera's not rolling, or B... Go get a room. Either or is a good option. But anyway, continuing on, Sammy goes on and says that the WWE Universe doesn't care for Kofi. Bitch, please. So then Sammy goes on and says that he deserves to be WWE Champion. <laughs> Sammy, you gotta specify. Xbox One or PS4? Then Sammy goes on and says that the WWE Universe deserves a champion that tells the truth that no one wants to hear. What? So then Xavier goes on and says that Sami Zayn smells like his 10th grade soccer drawer. Oh look, more smile jokes. And then Kofi says that he'll put his WWE title on the line later tonight against either AJ or Sami Zayn. And then we find out after commercial break that Shane is okayed the match as a triple threat match later tonight. But we will get to that later. Let's continue on. So next up, we get a one-on-one -on -one match. We get Mustafa Ali versus Andrade Cien Almas. Two of the eight competitors in the men's Money in the Bank ladder match at Money in the Bank. Highlights in the match. 
Mustafa's super kick was good, along with Andrade's body slam. Mustafa Ali's Spanish fly from the top rope was pretty well done, too. To the match ending, as Mustafa's gaining momentum, Randy Orton comes out from the crowd, and then Randy attacks Mustafa from behind, forcing the DQ. So Mustafa Ali was going to win the match regardless. So then after match, Randy goes on. He goes after Andrade Cien almost for post-match assault. Mustafa and Andrade would briefly fight back. Randy would then go and then he hit the RKO out of nowhere on Mustafa Ali. Andrade would then go for a springboard clothesline. And then Randy counters that clothesline with a mid-air RKO out of nowhere on Andrade Cien almost. And Randy is standing tall. And Randy is also part of that men's money in the bank ladder match. Question is, who will be standing tall with that contract? And will we see a third straight year of a failed cash-in? Or will we actually have a successful cash-in? We're going to have to wait and see. So then after that, we then air a promo for Roman Reigns. High throwing all the highlights of his careers. So I'll throw through all the brief highlights for you. There was when he won the tag, WWE Tag Team titles with Seth Rollins and The Shield. Roman winning 2015 Royal Rumble. Roman being Triple H for WWE title at WrestleMania 32. Only positive that match was Roman beating was the title game taken off a of part-timer. Then there was Mania 33, Roman Reigns being Undertaker. No Mercy 2017 when Roman Reigns beat it fuckboy Buckethead John Cena. The only thing people cared about in that match was if John Cena was going to put Roman Reigns over or not because my money was Cena was going to pull politics on Roman. Then there was SummerSlam 2018 where Roman beat at Brock Lesnar to become Universal Champion. Only positive of that was Roman taking the belt off a part-timer. And then we had the whole journey of Roman Reigns battling leukemia cancer and Roman Reigns successfully defeating the cancer in four months. I'll say it here, as much as I hate Roman Reigns, I'll give kudos and I will give credit words to Roman Reigns beating leukemia in four months is actually pretty impressive. I'll give him credit there. I'll give him kudos. I'll be a man and give credit words to. And of course, the final highlight was Roman Reigns beating Drew McIntyre in his first singles match at WrestleMania 35 since getting diagnosed with leukemia. But yeah. That is the whole journey of Roman Reigns in a nutshell in the last six in the last nine years. All of the things that were of importance. But yeah, odds are this is probably gonna be a promo for Money in the Bank. So we just got a spoiler for it. But yeah, anyway, continuing on. Next up we hit Shane McMahon's music hits, and then Shane McMahon comes out to the ring. So Shane, of course, is addressing the SmackDown Tag Team Division and their situation of the vacated SmackDown Tag Team titles. Before we get there, though, Shane goes on. He calls Miz a coward for attacking him with a steel chair. And then Shane goes and calls Miz's actions disgusting. Actually, Shane, Miz was only doing what you would have done because I guarantee you, Shane, if you were in Miz's position, you would do the exact same thing. So don't feed me that bullshit. So then Shane goes on and says that money in the bank, everyone will hear the best in America is victorious. So then Shane goes, he finally addresses the tag team division. Shane goes on, he says that he looked at all the tag teams on SmackDown. And Shane says it's clear as to who is worthy of being the new SmackDown tag team champions. So then Shane goes on, he introduces that team that will get these vacated titles. And then Daniel Bryan's music hits, and then Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan come out. And as Shane is about to reward him with the new titles before he could, the Usos music hits, and then Jimmy and Jay, the Usos, come out. Jimmy first comes out by saying, whoa, repeatedly. So yeah, saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. So when Jimmy did that, it's obvious somebody was watching Family Guy before coming out. So then Gay Shane goes on and asks, why are they here? Um, Shane, have you heard the new wild card rule? Yeah, Usos are only coming over because of the new wild card rule. So then the Usos go on and say that Ro since Roman Reigns said SmackDown is his yard. Wrong. It is not Roman's yard, Usos. It is not Roman's yard. Roman hasn't done a goddamn thing to prove it's his yard. And if any, any of the Roman Reigns fans or troll boys want to argue... Wake me when Roman becomes WWE Champion again. And then we'll talk. How about that? So the Usos go on and say that since Roman, their cousin, 
said it's his yard. Roman told the Usos that they could come over to SmackDown anytime. Per the new wildcard rule. So the Usos go on and say that they will welcome Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan into the Uso penitentiary. And the Usos say that you gotta earn you gotta earn your right to call yourselves the tag team champions. With how everything you have to earn your opportunities. Then the Usos go on and call Daniel Bryan. So Jimmy goes on, he calls Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan, SpongeBob SquarePants, and Patrick Starr. And then Jey Uso goes on and calls Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan, Phoenix and Butthead. Is this supposed to be edgy? Because it doesn't look edgy to me. It looks like a bunch of PG pussified bullshit. So the Usos go on to say that they want the SmackDown Tag Team title match against Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan so we can crown champions the right way. And then Shane goes on and okays the match. So then we come back from commercial break. We get to the matchup. Highlights in the match. Uso's double elbow drop was good. Eric's big boot was pretty good too. Eric's body slam splash combo pretty well done. Daniel's missile drop kick in the corner was good along with Eric's crossbody. Daniel's low drop kick was good along with his fickle kicks. Jimmy's super kick was good along with Daniel's little bell walk but Jimmy Uso would fight out of the hold. Jimmy's second super kick was good too along with Jay's and Zagiri. Jimmy and Jay's super kicks each were pretty good too, along with the Usos double super kick. Jay's suicide dive was pretty well done too. Jimmy hits the Uso splash on Eric Rowan, but Eric get kicks out of two. So we have once again, wrestler kicks out a finisher like it's your normal move cliche. Jay's super kick was also good along with Daniel's running knees. Jay then hits another two super kicks, leads to the match ending. Eric Rowan. Eric Rowan hits the Iron Claw choke slam on Jay. Eric Rowan gets the three count for the win. So yeah. So yeah, Eric and Rowan and Daniel Bryan are your new SmackDown tag team titles. So while it's on in a couple weeks, we'll probably see those titles thrown in the trash, and we're gonna get that fucking kids belt for version of the tag titles again. Like we got with the WWE title, that ugly ass design. Since they have Daniel Bryan going full PETA because, hey, titles like these are what's ruining the planet. When the titles like these are the least of your worries on the planet. Plus, with these belts, you're soak, you're quote, killing innocent animals. Piss off, PETA. So then after that, we didn't get another Firefly Shithouse segment. With the pick, with a segment from Raw. Where the Bray Wyatt proposes everyone has a picnic. Bray Wyatt even has a bunch of little kids with him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We do not need to know this. No, Bray. Keep your fetishes to yourself. <laughs> and in this video, the kids actually looked all depressed. It's like, yeah, they, all these kids know what this segment is. Yep, this segment is just Bray Wyatt wasting his... Bray Wyatt's queer career being wasted. Yep, the little kids express depressed looks, say it all. It is the perfect summary of Firefly Shithouse. Just a complete waste of time. So then after the match, Shane McMahon comes back out to the rain. Shane goes on, he discusses the high stakes at Money in the Bank. And then the Miz comes out from the crowd, and the Miz blindsides Shane, starting the brawl. And then the bandwagon team, Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel, come out, they attack Miz. While they're attacking Miz, Shane would then go and leave the ring. The Miz would then fight back and take out both Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. And then Shane comes back and drills Miz with a steel chair. See what did I tell you before? Miz did what only Shane would have done if Shane was in Miz's position on Monday. See so yeah, ya, Shane. You want to call Miz a coward for using a chair? Guess what? You're a coward too, fucking hypocrite. At least back your words up next time, Shane, you dumbass. But anyway, continuing on, next up we get a women's tag team match. And oh, by the way, Shane, you're not going to have any weapons at your disposal at Money in the Bank when you're locked in a cage with the Miz. But anyway, continuing on, next up we get a women's tag team match. We get the team of Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville against the team of Carmella and Amber Moon. All four of these women will be involved in the women's Money in the Bank ladder match. Highlights of the match. Carmella's head scissor was pretty good along with Sonya's spear. 
Embers forward away slam was good along with her springboard crossbody. Mandy's pump knee was good along with Embers and Sagiri in her suicide dive. Mandy's second pump knee was also good. Match ending. Mandy hits the face plant slam on Ember Moon. Mandy Rhodes gets the three count for the win. So Mandy and Sonya build momentum. Entering Money in the Bank. Oh wait, I forgot. Sonya Deville isn't part of the women's Money in the Bank quarter match. So it's three out of four. So yeah, it's everyone excluding Sonya Deville are involved in the women's Money in the Bank quarter match. I forgot. My bad. My mistake. Because I forgot Bailey's part of that match too. So then after the match, Paige's music hits and then Paige comes out to the ring. Paige goes on and says that Kyrie Sane and Asuka are ready to take overtake the women's division. Start, I mean, women's tag team division starting next week with Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. So it looks like next week on SmackDown we will get Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville against Kyrie Sane and Asuka. And then we go backstage where we have... Lars Sullivan goes on and attacks Matt Hardy and R-Truth backstage. Seriously, Vince. Is Lars Sullivan going to do anything? Please. Make him fucking do something. These stains of him attacking others backstage and having him do nothing is getting annoying. Give him a match. Let's see what he can do in the ring. Show me what he got. So then continuing on, next up we get to our main event matchup for the WWE title, the Triple Threat match. Kofi Kingston versus Sami Zayn versus AJ Styles. Kofi, of course, defending the title. And oh, by the way, Sami Zayn, if you don't want to be surrounded with Kentucky Fried Hillbillies, don't worry, next week you get consolation. Because next week you're going to be overseas in England. And you got to deal with all the England fans. And usually in England's... Usually it's the heels that usually get cheered and the baby faces get booed. So maybe next week, Sammy, you'll get people cheering for you. Next week. But anyway, to the matchup. Highlights of the match. AJ strikes throughout the match were pretty good, along with Kofi Springboard Missile Drop Kick. Kofi Springboard Splash was good along with Kofi's drop kick. AJ's backbreaker was good along with Kofi Spot Frog Splash to AJ's back. Sammy sit out power bomb was good along with a springboard tornado DDT. Kofi's payway kick corner in the in the corner was good along with Sammy's superplex. AJ's avalanche hurricane runner from the top rope was also good, along with his fireman into a neck breaker. Um, AJ's nineteen sixteen followed by Kofi's SLS. To AJ Styles pretty well done. Great sequence from all three men. AJ's payway kick was also good along with Kofi's. Kofi would hit the trouble in paradise on AJ Styles. But AJ would fall out of the ring, so you can't pin him outside the ring. While this is all happening, Kevin Owens would then come out from the crowd, and Kevin Owens would attack Xavier Woods from behind, destroying him again. Poor bastard. Hasn't Xavier's back taken enough punishment? But I guess you know what? The wrestling gods show no mercy to Xavier Woods. Because the wrestling gods are cruel bastards. Sammy then goes on, he hits three blue thunder bombs on Kofi Kingston. Kofi kicks out of all three. So it leads to the match ending. Kofi counters Sammy's Haluva kick with the trouble in paradise. Kofi gets the three count on Sammy Sane for the win. So then after the match, Kofi Kingston goes, he tends to Xavier Woods. And then Kofi gets the mic, and then Kofi says that at Money in the Bank, there will be hell to pay for Kevin Owens' actions. And that's how he ends back. Overall, that was a pretty meh episode. wasn't terrible, but it wasn't too good. You know, it's pretty meh, mediocre. Like, actually, for once, SmackDown was actually a better show than Raw. Might have how the tables have turned. The wild card rule has really taken effect into this. So, yeah, SmackDown this week actually gets a decent, excuse me, decent show for once. It gets a 4 out of 10 from me, but yeah. And also, speaking of that contract situation I was talking about on Raw, we have another one. Because Leo Rush has rejected his recent WWE extension, and then Xavier says that he wanted, I mean, Leo Rush said he wanted all the money. WWE won't give it to him. Leo Rush says he wants to be WWE champion. They won't give it to him. Leo Rush is not getting this way. He's been sent down to NXT. He's been rubbing people the wrong way backstage. And now Leo Rush is demanding his release. It's 
because Leo Rush says he wants to go join a real company. And WWE won't do it because they know Leo Rush is probably going to go to AEW. Fans just let him, let him go along with Sasha Banks. All you're doing with this new bullshit policy is just delaying the inevitable. Which is both of them hopping over to AEW. In fact, this sign was recently spotted at a recent Raw. I'll show it on the pit screen right here. It is the perfect sign. Yeah, I do feel like WWE is not even trying with their product anymore. Feels like they're just... It feels like Joan Rivers and all 350 of her plastic surgeries. They keep throwing it under the knife hoping it works. And hoping people like it. But in the end, all we, all we the fans see is just a completely doctored mess. Like, it is the perfect sign. It is the perfect way to describe this company. It is like, what the fuck is this company even doing anymore? Because part of this wild card rule is that Vince McMahon wants to get the ratings up high at all costs. Because the term rebuilding is nowhere to be found in Vince McMahon's dictionary. Ah, so Vince McMahon is pretty much the same as Ken Holland. Wonderful. But yeah, I think we'll continue that rant on another day. But yeah, that's all I gotta say, folks. Hope everyone's a great day, and yeah, peace out.